Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to show you is how the roots of a quadratic equation are related to the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and also how we can build up other quadratic equations with roots based around these roots. So, if we're given a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants, and that quadratic equation has roots alpha and beta, then clearly we could say that this came from the factorized equation x minus alpha times all of x minus beta, that equaling zero, which would lead to x equaling alpha and x equaling beta, the roots of the quadratic equation. Now if we expand this, we end up with x squared, and then for the x terms, if we factorize at the same time, we're going to get minus x alpha and minus x beta. So if I just put alpha plus beta there in brackets times x, that gives us our x term. And then we've got minus alpha times minus beta, which is going to give us plus alpha beta, and this will equal zero. Now when it's put in this format, notice how the quadratic equation that we started with turns out to be x squared minus the sum of the roots times x plus the product of the roots, and that equals zero. And so this is something that we're going to be coming back to many times over, that any quadratic equation can be expressed in terms of its roots then as x squared minus the sum of the roots times x plus the product of the roots and it equals zero. Now if I number this first quadratic equation as one and then this one here as two, if I divide through equation one by a, let's just put a note here, divide equation one by a, then we get x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a, and that equals zero. Now if I compare this equation to equation two, let's just put it here, compare with two, what do we notice? What I notice is that minus all of alpha plus beta must be equivalent to b over a. And the product of the roots, alpha beta, must be c over a. So what we have then is, in summary, this result. Sum of the roots, alpha plus beta, equals minus b over a. And the product of the roots, alpha beta, equals c over a. Now, here I have a typical kind of question you're likely to get based on these results. We have the quadratic equation x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals 0 has roots alpha and beta. And we've got to find the quadratic equation with roots alpha squared and beta squared. So going by this result here, if our roots are alpha squared and beta squared, then the quadratic equation that we're going to be looking for is x squared minus alpha squared plus beta squared times x plus alpha squared beta squared equals zero. So we're going to need to work out, first of all then, the sum of the roots, alpha squared plus beta squared. So let's just put that down there. We're going to need to know that result. And for the product of the roots, well, that's going to be alpha squared multiplied with beta squared. Now, in order to get these values here, without physically getting the roots, what I can pick up on is this idea here. We know that the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta, okay, equals minus b over a. b is negative 3, a is 1, so we're going to end up with 3 divided by 1, in other words, 3. And we can also get the product of the roots, alpha beta. We know that alpha beta equals c divided by a. So in other words, minus 5 divided by 1. Minus 5 divided by 1, and that's going to give us minus 5. 
Now to get alpha squared plus beta squared, what we need to do is turn to an identity. And that identity is alpha plus beta all squared. Alpha plus beta all squared, if we were to expand that bracket, is alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. So I can get alpha squared plus beta squared just by simply rearranging this. If I take 2 alpha beta away from both sides, I end up with alpha squared plus beta squared then will be equal to alpha plus beta all squared minus the 2 alpha beta. And that's nice because I've got the value of alpha plus beta and alpha beta from up here. So in other words, alpha squared plus beta squared then will be alpha plus beta, which we know is 3, that's all squared, minus 2 times alpha beta, and alpha beta was negative 5. So we've got 9 plus 10, in other words, 19. And to get alpha squared beta squared, all we need to do is just say that this is all of alpha beta all squared. Alpha beta we see is minus 5, so we end up with minus 5 all squared, which is 25. And so we now can say that therefore the quadratic equation that we're looking for, just put an intro here, the quadratic equation What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be x squared minus the sum of the roots times x. We know that the sum of the roots is 19, so it's going to be minus 19x. And then it's plus the product of the roots, which is 25. So you've got plus 25, and that equals 0. So we've been able to develop this quadratic equation based on the roots of this quadratic equation without physically finding out what alpha and beta were. Out of interest though, if you were to work out alpha and beta, you'd have to use the quadratic formula to get those values. And if you did, this is what you'd get. Alpha turns out to be 4.192 and so on, and beta turns out to be minus 1.192 and so on. And I leave it up to you to check by using the quadratic formula what the roots of this quadratic equation are. You should find you get 17.577 and so on and 1.422 and so on, which turn out to be the squares of these two values respectively, alpha and beta. Now in my next video, what I'll be doing is showing you how you can build up more quadratic equations from the reciprocals of the roots here and the cubes of these two roots. Very common questions that you're likely to get. So I would certainly encourage you to have a look at that and try those examples. Okay, well, I hope that's been then of some use to you so far.